Hello, Dr. Ferguson coming to you from the Passion Camp. For the last uh, several times we've been talking about Alzheimer's disease and we've been doing a little series on that. It's actually called Alzheimer's disease and not Alzheimer's disease. And today I'm going to focus a little bit on the caregiver. And the caregiver for the patient with Alzheimer's disease absolutely, absolutely, absolutely needs not to try to do it on their own. When you try to do it on your own, eventually we will have two patients. Because Alzheimer's disease is a tough disease and eventually as the patient's cognitive abilities decline and their physical abilities decline and you have to do more and more for them, we end up with two patients as opposed to just one patient. And that's what I'm always concerned about when I'm seeing patients in the office that have Alzheimer's disease. I'm concerned about that loved one, the husband, the wife, the son, the daughter, that's trying to do it all by themselves at home because the rest of the family, you know, I can't get them to do nothing, they don't want to work, they don't want to help. And I say to that person, it doesn't matter that they don't want to help, they have to help. You have to make this important enough to pull all the family together to get them at a powwow so that you all can come together and come up with a solution. A lot of times families want to keep their loved one at home and I think that's wonderful, but you got to have the manpower to do that. So one of the suggestions I frequently make to my patients is that pull everybody together, make it mandatory. They're not, they're not, they can't miss it, they can't try to make it, they might make it if I can't, no. You gotta make it, this is about mom, this is about dad, and this is things we gotta discuss. We gotta make it real, real important. Okay, so now we've made that, that meeting very important to be had. You get them at the table, and now you, you need to do some homework before you get them to the table. You need to do some homework on what it's gonna cost to keep your loved one at home. You know, if they're wearing depends or diapers, what does that cost? If they're needing medications or needing other uh, supplies to keep them at home, what does that cost? The, to rent the bed, to have the Hoyer lift, the wheelchair, the walker. You need to have kind of an assessment if you've been the primary caregiver up to now to what all those different types of things cost. And now, uh, what's the next step? Well, you're gonna need some help. So, what type of help do you need? You need somebody to come in and help bathe your loved one, to give them a bath, to feed them. So what is that help going to be? And, and what is the cost of that help? Now when you come together with your family meeting, you've already got some data together, you've got some details down, you've got some understanding of what needs to be done, and then you, you put it on the table. You say, okay, these are the things we got to do for mom. And I know you live in Hawaii, so I know you can't do this personally, but you need to send the cash. So I tell them that when you have this meeting, that you tell the family member either put up the time or put up the cash so that we can hire somebody to, to take the time that you would have been taking. If they say they don't have the money, well, then they gotta put up the time. And when you put the schedule together, you've gotta keep the schedule. If you're that primary caregiver, and maybe everybody's kind of belly aching, doesn't really wanna do it, but they've got their scheduled time. When Mary gets there at six o'clock, you have got to get up and leave got to go somewhere else and not sit there and try to tell Mary what to do. you got to leave Mary alone and you got to go about your business or else you'll never get those family members who aren't really in the groove of helping you in the group because they have to know that they're by themselves and it's their responsibility to take care of mom or dad during this time period. And you have to make it important. This cannot be maybe I'll be there tomorrow, maybe not. No, nope. Thursdays at six o'clock, that's your time you get here I'm gone and you have to leave now if you live together with that loved one then you still need to leave at least initially if you're having trouble with the family member maybe participating or maybe wanting to be involved you still got to leave you got to get in your car and go somewhere you know go to the store walk around and look at what's in the store but you have to give that other family member a sense that they're there by themselves and that they got to do the work too and that's a starting point, and I would encourage any of you who are trying to take care of a loved one that has Alzheimer's disease by yourself, that's where you need to start because eventually we will have two patients. You may think you can do it by yourself, and you may be doing fine by yourself the first year, two years, even three or four years. Eventually it's going to come to a point where either you're going to become a patient yourself with depression or stress and anxiety, or you're gonna to have to put mom in that nursing home that you were trying not to do. You've gotta bring in the whole family and make them a part of the process and you have to make it important. You cannot give them an option not to participate. 
They have to participate, whether it's in their cash, whether it's in their money, uh, whether it's in their time. Somehow they have to participate. Got to make it important. On that note, Dr. Ferguson coming to you from the Passion Cam. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.